As your game expands, eventually you'll end up with tons of individual sprites and images. And this is bad for performance if you don't group and bundle them. And there are a few videos I'll link in the description below that go into it with a little more detail. But to put it shortly, the GPU, your graphics processing unit, it has to keep checking what image file you're referencing. And if you have a lot of individual sprites and images, there will be a lot of checks and that will add latency. So this is where we minify and combine our assets into a few bigger ones. So the GPU doesn't have to check as much, thus increasing performance. And this process is known as creating a sprite atlas. All right, let's hit it. So what I'm going to do first is that I'm going to slice up the sprite sheet into its individual frames using image magic. And that will be linked in the description along with commands, but essentially it's convert the image name plus the dash crop flag and then the frame size width and height in pixels and the output name and the percent %d will just number the output so as you can see and this is what it looks like and i've done the same for the other sprite sheets as well all right so open up texture packer hit agree without reading it we're going to use the free version for now, and we're going to drag in all of our frames, except for the sprite sheet itself, and with the fire as well. I'm going to skip the green circle for this one. And for the framework, we're using Phaser 3, and this, it's really weird because for some reason, Phaser 3 export is a pro feature, and I thought the basic packing and exporting was free, and it is on Pixie, and maybe a few others, but... I don't know why it's not free for Phaser. Like the more advanced features such as more smarter algorithmic packing, the compression, and the trimming, they're pro and that makes absolute perfect sense to me. But at the very least, I believe that they should provide the most basic packing and exporting, but it's not my software, so whatever. And anyways, you have like an 8 day free trial to do what you need to do and skedaddle. Anyways, moving on. So in the advanced settings, we have just a lot of things to go over. So here we go. Detect identical sprites will remove any duplicate frames. And this is great for the transparent frames. The multi-pack above it is that it will just create another sprite sheet and another atlas if this one gets too big, but it's not. So I'm going to leave that off. The trim will just remove transparent pixels around every frame. And the algorithm is what algorithm it will use to squish things together. And in the bottom right, you can see how it affects file size. And the texture area mainly deals with compression, but it uses the free libraries, PNG Quant and PNG Opt, which I'll show you how to use without Texture Packer. So we'll just ignore that area. Anyways, that's pretty much all we care about. So select an export path and then click Publish Sprite Sheet, and it will generate the Atlas with all the corresponding frames and of course the combined image file. And for the duplicate frames that are removed from the image file, they'll be referenced to the same frame in the JSON file. So you're not gonna miss any animation at all. Moving on to image compression, we're gonna use PNG Quant and this is what Texture Packer uses underneath. So download it, the links are in the description, and it's not an installer, it's a zip file with a folder. So extract that somewhere. I've already done it, so I'm not gonna do it. So just open up the folder and drag your image into one of the corresponding bat files, and then it will generate the corresponding compressed images. And as you can see, it's more than half the file size and the image quality, sometimes there is a difference, so you should double check it, but for Really most often, there is no difference at all. So I'm just going to keep the one with the smallest file size. There is a free texture packer made by Gamma FP for Phaser 3, which will do the exact same thing we just did, except it can't detect identical sprites, trim, or do any smart packing to reduce the file size of the image, but it'll get the job done. So we're going to pack two sprite sheets, click import sprite sheet,
set the frame width and height. In this case, I know it's 64 by 64. And you can ignore the grid lines, by the way. Even though they're inaccurate, the generated files are accurate. And the JSON file will count every frame and reference them accordingly. So let's just import our other sprite sheet. The sprite name is just the output name, and when you're done, click the save button, and it will give us a zip with the files we want. So a problem with packing several individual frames is that the JSON file ends up to be huge, and that's because it's not minified. So if you minify it, it reduces the size by about two times. Let's say you want an entire sprite sheet to be considered as one frame, so you can just use the import sprite button and it'll do just that. And it will generate a much smaller JSON file. The image file would be the same really. And again, you can use PNG quant to further compress the file sizes. And I 